Awesome, so you've decided to start learning saxophone. Brilliant, but which one do you choose? Because there's like four different options here. Alto, tenor, soprano, barry. It's confusing to know. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down for you, explain what the differences are between the saxophones, and also tell you which saxophones you really should avoid as a beginner, and which ones are a better choice for you to get started on. Just before we get started though, make sure you do click the subscribe button, hit that bell icon, uh, notification thing, thingamajigger, whatever it is, so you find out about new videos too, because I'm putting new things out all the time. Right, let's dig in and get started. <laughs> Now whatever inspired you to start learning saxophone, you're gonna be faced with this question about which saxophone to start playing. Uh, I get this question quite a lot because you know, over the last seven years, I've taught more than 10,000 students actually through sax school. Actually we're up around the 11,000 mark now. A lot of people, so that question comes up quite a lot. Which saxophone, Nigel, should I start on, alto or tenor? Uh, so it's a really important one for us to really investigate. Now, there's four different main types of saxophones and in today's lesson I'm gonna talk you through them and what the differences are and why you should choose one rather than the other, in my opinion. Now, first of all, well, this is the alto saxophone. You're probably all familiar with this one. You're also probably familiar with the tenor saxophone. But let's start by talking about all the different saxophones. So there, there are four main saxophones that you're gonna come across. Uh, the four main ones that we see. There are others, but these are the four main ones that you're gonna see in a, a music shop or playing in bands. And they're gonna start with the soprano saxophone, which could be bent, actually. It could be shaped the same as an alto, or it could be straightened out like my soprano here. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference whether it's a bent one or a straight one. They sound slightly different. Um, but the actual mechanism is exactly the same. So we've got soprano saxophone. We've got our alto and tenor saxophones. These are the most common ones that you're gonna see. And then the big daddy one over the end here, of course, is the Barry sax. You probably already know about the Barry saxophone, and it's pretty cool. Think about Lisa Simpson. Uh, think about all those uh, cool-looking saxophone players in the big band that play the Barry saxophone. It's a really cool instrument. Now, the, the most important thing to remember about every saxophone is that all saxophones have the same mechanism, okay? So... The way you put the fingers down to make the notes is exactly the same whether you're playing a soprano right through to the barry sax. Uh, in fact, every saxophone that's made has the same finger system. Now, they don't sound the same. They obviously sound higher or lower, but they're also in different keys, meaning that when you press down three notes on one saxophone, on this saxophone, for example, it's gonna sound different to pressing down three notes on this saxophone. That's something that you learn later on. It doesn't really matter when you're starting and it shouldn't really have any impact on your choice of saxophone. Now, while a lot of people are tempted with a soprano or even a barry sax when they just get started, I really suggest that it's not the best thing to do. Starting on a soprano saxophone is challenging. And the reason is that the soprano mouthpiece is the smallest mouthpiece of all the four saxes that we're looking at here today. And that means that it takes a lot more control to get a good sound out with your embouchure muscles, with your mouth muscles. Think about how hard it would be to catch a golf ball from a really long throw as opposed to catching a beach ball. Right? A beach ball is easier to catch because it's bigger. A golf ball is really tiny. Well, it's a bit like that with playing saxophone because the soprano mouthpiece is very small, so it takes very small movements to control it, as opposed to the alto or the tenor or even the barry sax. Now, it is nice and small, and it's compact, and people say to me, oh, Nigel, but I can stick this in my bag and take it with me. It's not heavy. I can handle it easily. Um, it fits in my room nice, but I wouldn't suggest that you start on this one. This is in my opinion, a better saxophone to move to once you've got your skills together. And actually, the same holds true for the Barry saxophone. Although it looks cool, it looks fun, and it is big, so you'd think, well, a bigger mouthpiece is slightly easier to control. Kind of right, but it's also a big, heavy instrument that takes a lot of air, and it's not a great instrument to start with. So straight off the bat, I would say soprano and Barry sax for most players are not the best saxophone to start off with. 
Hey, just before we get on to the alto and the tenor, tell me in the comment below what inspired you to start learning saxophone. Was it listening to famous jazz player like Coltrane or Michael Brecker, or was it the sexy sax man, or was it Kenny G, or was it Dave Coz, or was it, um, I don't know, Grover Washington? What's your favorite saxophone player, or maybe just a solo, the One Step Beyond solo? Pick up the pieces, whatever it was. Let me know in a comment, because I'd love to know. Okay, so that brings us down to the alto and the tenor saxophone. Now, these are the two most common choices for people when they're starting out. And like I was saying at the start of the lesson, all saxophones have the same finger mechanism. All saxophones have also got the same mouthpiece system as well. We've all got a mouthpiece, a reed, and a ligature. And we make the sound in effectively the same way, even though the mouthpieces are different sizes. The main difference is the sound that the saxophone makes, how heavy it is, how it suits you physically. Now the thing is for adult learners, actually I say that either alto or tenor is a great choice. For younger players, I always recommend an alto because it's easier to manage, it's smaller, it's lighter, it's easier to carry, they can get their hands around it easier. If you're a smaller person, you might find the alto suits you better. But for most adults, either alto or tenor is a great choice. If you really can't make up your mind between the two, then I would suggest starting with the alto saxophone just because it's a little bit easier to manage. It's a great way to develop your skills because the mouthpiece is a nice, easy size that suits everybody. And the thing that I've noticed from so many students coming through sax school is that just about everybody will start on one saxophone and then progress to another saxophone. So if you do start on the alto saxophone, give it six months and I reckon that you're gonna be ready to maybe transition onto a tenor as well or maybe adding a soprano or a barry sax into your repertoire. Starting on the alto or starting on the tenor though is the best choice because these are the easiest ones to learn and they're also the saxophones that you're gonna see most commonly in ensembles. So if you get to go play in a community band or if you get to sit in with a local band, alto uh, or tenor is gonna be an easier choice for you. Now whatever saxophone that you choose to start with, there's a couple of things that I think are super important. The first thing is make sure you get the best saxophone that you can afford. Uh, it doesn't need to be a pro level instrument, but you should try and get a good one. And the best way to do that is to go and find your local music shop and talk to them and get some advice from them because there's a good chance that they're going to be giving you support with that instrument when it does need maintenance or repair. And don't forget too, it doesn't need to be a new saxophone. Used saxophones are actually definitely worth considering because a good, uh, well-maintained saxophone will last a really long time. I've had this one for 30 years, would you believe? And it's done thousands and thousands of gigs and been around the world like 20 times. So, uh, you know, a good saxophone, well-maintained, will last a long time. The second thing super important is, and this is really, really important, you must make sure that you get some great resources and support when you're learning. Because unless you've got the support of a great teacher and a great community of players around you to help you and some excellent learning resources, it's easy to learn, lose your way and to get frustrated and stop playing. And we really don't want that. I want you to keep going with your playing. That's why with Sax School, our membership community is such an important part of learning because people can get involved with thousands of players from all around the world and really so get support, that, that, it's that support and feedback that's really important, and also direct feedback from me as a teacher or you know if you've got a local teacher around you, uh, and the resources that you like to work on, it's super important. Now to help get you started actually, I've got a free bundle of lessons on my website called the Ultimate Saxophone Toolkit. Now these are some of my favorite lessons, and there's a bunch of things in there to get you started, including a quick start guide to saxophone that'll get you up and playing notes and a great tune super fast. It's free, there's a link below here where you can go and grab that from the website. It's been used by like thousands and thousands of players, and I, everyone loves to use it. 
because it's good fun and it'll get you playing super fast. So make sure you do grab hold of that. And also don't forget to click subscribe and the bell notification here so that you can find out about the other videos and explore the other videos on my channel because there's a bunch of stuff here to help you, whether it's choosing the gear that you want or helping you with the technique and um, skills for actually playing in saxophone and having fun making some great music on your saxophone. All right, hope that's been helpful. Keep practicing hard. I'll catch you next time.